You ever stop and think about what's actually happening when you send money to another country? It feels so simple, right? Just a click. But behind that screen, there's this incredible, invisible machine, a complex network of messages, middlemen, and high-speed wires that moves trillions of dollars around the planet every single day. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain and see how that machine really works. So let's just jump right in with a super simple question. Let's say you're in New York and you send 100 bucks to your friend in London. Does a little digital packet of $100 actually fly across the Atlantic? The short answer, absolutely not. And what really happens is way more fascinating. To get this, you gotta wrap your head around one single crucial idea. Seriously, this is the key to everything in global finance. The difference between sending the message and actually moving the money. They're two totally separate events. Okay, think of it like this. The financial message, that's like sending a WhatsApp text. It's a secure instruction that just says, hey, you need to pay this person. But the text itself isn't the money, right? The settlement, well, that's the armored truck that shows up later to actually move the value from one place to another. So to spell it out, a financial message is just data, pure information. It's a very structured, very secure text that tells bank A, hey, take money out of this account, and tells bank B, put that money into this other account. The message itself has zero cash in it. And financial settlement? That's the moment the money really moves. It's the final, can't-take-it-back transfer of funds between the bank's own accounts, which are usually held at a central bank. That is the armored truck arriving at the final destination. Okay, so who's sending all these WhatsApp messages? Well, the biggest name in the game, by far, is Swift. And let's be super clear. Swift is not a bank. It doesn't hold your money. It doesn't move your money. Think of it as the world's financial postman, just delivering the payment instructions. So here's the play-by-play. -play. Your bank packages up that instruction and sends it out over the Swift network. Now, if your bank and your friend's bank don't have a direct relationship, which by the way happens all the time, that message has to hop through one or more intermediary banks called correspondent banks. Then, finally, it arrives at the destination bank, which gets the instruction to pay your friend. And the scale of this thing? I mean, it is just mind-boggling. SWIFT connects the financial world across more than 200 countries. It is, for all intents and purposes, the global standard. And it's not just a few of the big dogs, either. We're talking over 11,000 different financial institutions. Banks, investment firms, big corporations, they are all plugged into this one single network to send and receive their payment messages. All right, so if SWIFT is our global postman, who's driving the armored trucks? Well, these are the settlement systems. The official term is Real-Time Gross Settlement Systems, or RTGS. These are the pipes that move massive amounts of money instantly and permanently. Let's meet a few of the big ones. Over in the Eurozone, the absolute titan is a system called Target 2. This thing is the backbone for all major payments in Euros. It's what all the central banks and big commercial banks use to settle huge deals with each other. Jump across the channel to the UK and you'll find CHAPS. If you've ever bought a house in Britain, that final huge payment almost certainly moved through this system. It's the go-to for any big, urgent payment that absolutely has to clear on the same day. And what's really fascinating is Hong Kong's system, CHATS. Unlike most of the others, this thing is a multi-currency powerhouse. It can settle payments in Hong Kong dollars, US dollars, euros, and the Chinese yuan, which makes it an absolutely critical hub for global finance. Okay. So let's put all this on one page and see how it fits together. Notice the big difference here. SWIFT is the only one on this list that's a truly global messaging system. It can handle any currency you throw at it. The others, they're the settlement engines. They're the armored trucks, and they're usually tied to a specific currency in a specific place, like Target 2 for the Euro or CHAPS for the British Pound. This division of labor, the message versus the money, is what makes the entire global machine tick. Now here's where things get really, really interesting. This entire global machine, all of these different systems we just talked about, are in the middle of the biggest upgrade in a generation. They are all, right now, learning to speak a brand new, much more powerful financial language. And a clock is ticking. By November 2025, we're going to see what people are calling a Big Bang migration. After that date, this new data standard called ISO 2022 becomes mandatory for all cross-border payments on SWIFT. The old message types, they're being retired, gone. So what's the big deal? Why does this matter? Well, look at it this way. The old system was like trying to write an address on a postcard. 
All the information was just jumbled together in one big block of text. The new way, ISO 2022, is like filling out a perfect modern online form. Every single piece of data, the name, the city, the country, gets its own clean, separate field. It's precise, it's structured, and computers can read it perfectly. I know, I know, a data upgrade might sound like the most technical, boring thing on earth, but trust me, the consequences of this shift are massive. This isn't just about making things a little more efficient. It's about transparency, it's about security, and it's a huge deal for fighting financial crime. Here's why. With that super clean, structured data, the good guys get a massive advantage. Computer screening systems can now instantly tell the difference between a person's name and their country. That drastically cuts down on mistakes and sanctions checks and makes it way, way harder for bad actors to hide illicit money in the system. It is so significant that people on the inside, the compliance experts, are literally calling it the AML game changer. AML, of course, standing for anti-money laundering. This isn't just a small tweak. It's a fundamental upgrade to the quality of the data that's attached to every single global payment. Now, all of this is happening while the world itself is changing. For a long time, the SWIFT network has been the undisputed global standard. But other systems are popping up. Take China's SIP system, for example. It's designed to do both the messaging and the settlement for the Chinese Yuan, basically bundling the postman and the armored truck into one service. It's a different model, creating a new pathway for payments. All right, that was a lot. So let's boil it all down to the key takeaways. Number one, messaging is just the instruction. Settlement is the actual move. Got it? Number two, Swift is the world's postman delivering those instructions. Three, the big RTGS systems like CHAPS and Target 2 are the armored trucks moving the really big money. And finally, four, this huge upgrade ISO 22000 is making this entire invisible machine way, way smarter. And all of that leaves us with one massive lingering question for the future. You know, for decades, the rules of this global machine have been pretty stable. But now, as data becomes the new oil of finance and new systems with new rules begin to emerge, the real question for the next decade is this. Who gets to write the global rulebook?